Hey, uh, so uh, my name is Sanjay and so I won't take much of a time. Uh, I lead the analytics team in APG and I just want to give an overview of what we do and after this I know there is a lunch coming up and we don't have much time. So, just bear with me for 15 minutes maximum. Uh, and and thank you for Hasgeek for organizing this and uh, two lovely talks uh, for on this area. So, what, what what to just give an overview of what APG does, APG is somewhat in the system in the middle uh, which connects the enterprises with users and apps and there are a couple of entities involved in these transactions which are called developers ops API team who builds the APIs platform, APIs business and the business and the IT managers. And as these transactions happen, what is needed by these, these entities is to understand what is happening and therefore, analytics comes into picture. So, I will just give a very short and very quick overview of what we do and how we do it. Over the last one and a half year to almost two years, we have been trying to build this system. It is not yet matured much, but we will eventually go there. Uh, many of these will uh, be similar to what Santanu was saying. Uh, and let me let me go through this. So, as of now, what uh, this is this is the kind of statistics that that I have put together. We have almost about 200 plus plus customers, and this whole analytics has got about 250 plus nodes running. Uh, all of them are in cloud as of now, and the amount of data that we are gathering each day from all these customers, basically, this when I say customers, it actually means the transactions that I showed in the diagram before, and we are we are we are getting about a 200 GB of data each day and this is this is like increasing almost every day. So, we are expecting about crossing by end of 2004 750 800 GB uh, if not more. Uh, <laughs> we also provide a free offering which is uh, 90 percent same features as the enterprise customers that we provide and there we have almost about 10,000 plus customers running. Uh, the whole system spans across five regions, US East, West, EU, Southeast, uh, APEC and Northeast APEC uh, across the AWS. Many of these customers, the enterprise customers have a multi-region deployment of their system and therefore, we have to collect data from all of these places. Uh, our availability goal is 99.9949. We have not reached there, we are trying to get there. We also have a similar on premise solution, the same solution can be deployed on premise for customers who want them on premise. Many of our customers do not want a cloud solution, they want to deploy these solutions in their premise. So, we have to adapt to that. What are the key goals? The key goals is uh, the data quality of this has to be absolutely perfect because lot of this depends drives the business decision. So, therefore, it is dependable data availability of the system scale which are the quite natural in today's world. Responsiveness to interactive queries this is I will come it is a bit of importance uh, ability to customize whatever the reports that you are seeing and you you should be very uh, obvious in your when you are showing the visualization. So, one of the I mean one of our big uh, as I said in that uh, shown in the diagram, the business users are one of the big users of that. So, if you make it complex in terms of interpreting your data and all this then it is of not of much use. So, it has to be very very lucid. Uh, smart visualization is definitely one of the thing. Uh, architectural highlights multi tenant distributed zero data loss is definitely the guarantee that we have provide. We cannot provide a, uh, we provide an at least one semantics. So, 
So, that means we should not have a zero data loss. It is a completely meta metadata driven pipeline. So, as you can imagine the 200 plus customers on the cloud, uh, each one it is a multi tenanted 250 boxes mach or machine. So, whenever whenever some new customers are onboarded, it is the wiring is totally dependent on the metadata. So, that it makes the uh, operability much more simple. Um, <coughs> this is very important point is uh, we do not have we have a fixed uh, message payload, but every customers can extend on top of that. So, you can define as a customer you can define what extra data you need and therefore, it makes a little bit challenging in terms of how you report how you uh, slice and dice your data. You have no control of what those extended dimensions and metrics are. <laughs> Offline and near real times are one of our goal and every piece of um, even though we have an UI there is it is that the whole thing is depend is driven by an API rest, rest API base. So, even the UI is one of our client. So, people or, or the users or customers can write their own applications to consume from our data. So, it is totally REST API driven. <coughs> uh, we have to guarantee that the data ingestions that happens uh, in, in seconds latency cannot be uh, in, in minutes. The aggregated data today we whatever we have we does pre computations should be available in a couple of minutes. Uh, I think right now the SLA is kind of a two minutes guarantee uh, and these feeds these pre computation feeds all the dashboards in the near real time. Uh, when as, as Santanu was speaking when when you get the messages you basically have different pipelines one pipelines for real processing and one pipeline for batch processing. Uh, typically I will I will come to the diagram typically what uh, we are actually deploying is a Hadoop for batch processing where we do all the offline uh, transact offline analysis and then there we are also uh, working on uh, storm for uh, near real time processing of various events. So, for example, customers can come and define an event he is interested in. Remember this is all uh, it is very flexible. So, we do not actually know what the customer is going to define. So, you can define a rule, you can define an event and that event has to be generated uh, event has to be kind of uh, uh, detected in their data pipeline uh, in the near real time and some alerts or some some decision has to be taken based on that. So, these are mainly uh, so, I, I will not go into much of the detail these are typical stack uh, generally this is the stack that is followed in all probably all data collection data pipeline analytics stuff. <laughs> we have these event collectors or we also call it data pushers which are which are basically across all these five regions are sitting there and transferring the messages. Currently, we have not gone to Kafka. We are evaluating this Kafka. Our system has been built out of Cupid's. If you do, if you know about Cupid's, is is basically MQP protocol. Uh, and this this Cupid's build up the message bus that we have, and it also provides all uh, public sub pub sub model. And what happens is that once the data Cupid is essentially AMQBP is extremely fast, uh, but it has got some uh, so I mean less kind of features than Kafka provides. So, therefore, we are trying to evaluate uh, and get into Kafka if required. Uh, ingestion layer is something that we have uh, written on our I mean it is a custom build and what it does is basically it <laughs> there are two pipelines one pipeline uh, essentially there are three pipelines one pipeline goes directly to Hadoop for any offline processing and another pipeline goes to a database uh, which is a cluster of Postgres machines uh, and where we compute as the messages comes here we compute all the aggregations and display it from here. Uh, Storm is something that we are evaluating for the real time use cases. Uh, Redshift is something that we have adopted 
it is an Amazon uh, uh, service which is basically an OLAP database columnar form. Uh, the reason mainly because we have as I was saying uh, we have uh, this flexibility of customers can actually define their schemas. So, essentially you do not know what to uh, build your aggregates for, what to what customers will query, what reports they want you have no control on that, it is totally flexible. So, one of the thing that we initially faced is that as the data volume grows and you you do not know what to uh, I mean what to aggregate or compute on your query starts suffering because you will no longer actually on the database sides or on any other uh, no SQL sites you will be able to actually handle the queries uh, at a volume of like say 50 million data per day or something like that. So, what what happened is that post that we try what try to figure out what kind of solutions we uh, we can have and it turned out that MPP or kind of database which is like if you have heard of names of Netiza or Vertica these are the kind of database which handles this kind of uh, uh, use cases. However, uh, fortunately we since we were in Amazon, uh, rich Amazon came up with a similar solution for uh, which is equivalent to Vertica and Netiza which is called Redshift much cheaper from that for that is columnar DT DB. Therefore, for analytical queries it is much faster than than what we used to have here. Um, so, we adopted uh, Redshift. <laughs> so, generally this is our typical deployment uh, picture. Uh, this path is still uh, uh, being evaluated and we are we are coming with some kind of solutions here. These are like even collectors which sit across all five data zones all five zones I mean sorry uh, regions in Amazon and this is the message and goes via the message bus to the ingesters. I have not actually drawn the message bus. Uh, this goes for any offline analysis and from there it goes directly to the redshift uh, where we store this is all of this is a batch pipeline even load to the redshift is not a, a real time one it is basically batch. Uh, so, periodically you dump data load data and redshift this is streaming we get into the PG and so far it has been working excellent for us uh, basically you stream the data and we do not have an index on any of these. Uh, raw data table therefore, it is almost as good as sequential write. Um, once we get the data we periodically uh, I think currently around every 2 3 minutes we compute all the uh, all the aggregates and those aggregates or the dashboards that uh, I was talking about uh, was actually fed by this data. Uh, for the real time analytics we as I said we will we are eval evaluating storm uh, in order for uh, any of the event detection mechanisms that we want to do. <coughs> so, general use cases for all the offline things are typically uh, being in this pipeline and it is like uh, things like if you want users customers can come up define uh, rules for example, they might want to see uh, what is what is your trend of TAF uh, what is your today's traffic in comparison with last 6 months of average or what is the moving average or various other metrics for example, there can be errors, there can be latency matrices, there can be business matrices in terms of revenue and all this. So, which requires an offline uh, analysis. And apart from that we are also using that pipeline for uh, any of the our data sciences uh, activity. Uh, for example, you can you can detect any kind of anomalies or you can detect do any kind of principal component analysis or any any similar things uh, which requires machine learning. So, one of our uh, thing that we are uh, we are using the building the I mean uh, evaluating the Mahmoud library, uh, if any of you knows about it, yes. What's the backlog of the database when you say analytics? Ah. Uh, 
so it's it's basically the transactions uh, it's ex today we do not capture the payloads of the transactions we capture typically headers and as well as if i go back to this to this picture so as the transactions come we have a logic that sits here and it runs this logic can do for example it can avail sort of lot of services for example authentication service quota service cash service right and therefore you are able to identify what has happened in this request and response flow right now as soon as that happens this data is collected along with some of the context data of the transactions these data now flows into uh, the analytical analytic system uh, the data is in key value map obviously and protobufed to the analytics where the ingestion layer extracts and send it to the downstream did that answer your question these ap these these apis basically we are if you if you think about this this is a proxy so whatever the back end system has the logic is belongs to the enterprise we are just exposing the services when somebody goes through this and talks to our services this service you this service in turn actually calls the actual apis so we have no restriction on what api transactions happen it totally belongs to, totally depends upon what services the enterprise has to provide so it can be a retailer it can be banking anything healthcare anything yeah so i was talking about the offline processing that we do uh, basically as as i said on the redshift pipeline that we have we periodically upload data to redshift redshift being columnar uh, format the io is definitely much much less for all analytical queries uh, the every so we have something called a custom reports where based, because as i said the schema or the data that somebody some customers api transactions are sending they <coughs> can be customized so it it varies from customer to customer so we have as let's say a default 10 fields right another customer can come up and say i want 10 more data and this can be different from this 10 data can be different from another another customer's 10 data so it is very difficult for us it is it is not it's actually impossible for us to know what kind of queries customer want or what kind of reports customer wants right so therefore there is a new case in which a customer can go and look at his uh, his data set and define a set of reports which he is interested in now this reports can contain uh, data about the extended column set extended schema set that he has right that is why uh, it is not possible to index uh, because we don't know what to index so that is the reason uh, we we send it to the columnar database and on interactively we query based on the uh, based on the uh, request for the reports uh, <laughs> these are these are typically any any rule customers can define on their on their systems and these rules are uh, as i said analysis of maybe the revenue maybe the uh, 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 operational uh, details over last six months with the current and whatever that rule he wants it it goes and notifies the customer for example one example might be the back end system latency the back end system is owned by the customer not by us so the latency of the back end system has suddenly spiked compared to the average of last week so if he comes and define that we process this data and uh, send the notifications to the customers in real time uh, uh, this one is not real time the other pipeline is going to be the real time where you look at it a very small uh, period of data <coughs> so these are some of the 
these are some of the reports driven by the batch uh, system or offline system. Uh, this is interactive, but I am calling it an offline because it is this reports do not appear I mean they, they are they cannot be fetched in a near in a real time or a near real time. There is a lag because it, it happens on the raw data and therefore, there is a lag on uploading the data to the redshift and then getting it out from from the columnar database. Uh, near real time use case as I say all of our there are there are there are several number of uh, out of the box dashboards we have those are all uh, handled by uh, the pre computations that we do uh, every 2 minutes every 3 minutes I think and uh, so the latency is basically about 3 minutes uh, to get the dashboard. Uh, even detection and alerting is something that we do uh, on the uh, on the streaming uh, model. There is we are also thinking of uh, thinking of extending this for example, uh, I showed the diagram in which the APG sits in between and then you have an analytic system. Now, one of the use case that we are trying to think about is how do we how does analytic uh, or insights into the insights in this data feed back into the API platform uh, that we have and control that. For example, uh, uh, you can tune the cache right there is a caching service over there. What if if you uh, identify what is the bottleneck what is happening and tune the cache right or tune any throttling mechanism right. So, that is something that will probably be on the real time uh, platform because it has to be or for example, uh, can you actually uh, increase the number of machines uh, uh, auto scale up based on some of the data that the analytic system uh, gets in real time. So, evaluate the data in real time the maybe in the last 5 minutes of data and uh, auto scale uh, set of servers immediately. Okay. So, those are some of the use case that we are trying to handle in the near real time. As of now, these are the dashboards that all are fed by the real near real time I would not call it a real time uh, uh, which basically talks gives you all the operational details. For example, this is a this is a set of graphs which talks about uh, enterprises backends uh, errors and latencies. How does your backend performs because it is very important for them to make sure that their system is up. So, that all the transactions that are happening finally, end up in giving proper result right. So, so this this dashboard actually shows uh, the details about that. Uh, this is a normal dashboard which shows generally about a trend of traffic how many developers are building. So, for example, um, uh, any retailer maybe Amazon some lots of developers will be there who can uh, write uh, apps uh, Amazon or Flipkart or maybe some banking uh, applications. So, this shows what are the what are the apps and which are the developers app that are currently transacting for a given period of time. So, all of these details are actually these are kind of a near real time within 2 3 minutes it comes uh, and these are uh, operational details that the enterprise customers are interested in. So, um, I did not go much into any architecture because that was not my uh, goal we generally had uh, TikTok. I just wanted to give what we do uh, at APG and we have been trying to do this for uh, for uh, all the all our customers that uh, are getting onboarded with APG and over the last years the number of uh, customers have actually ramped up and as you can see I mean uh, we have actually grown into a 5 uh, different uh, regions. It is about in total if you see uh, recently we I, I think we have uh, reached close to 2000 TPS uh, over the whole system which amounts to about I think 170 million 
transaction a day. Uh, so, all of these data are basically coming and flowing into this. Uh, yeah, so, so that is all uh, I had I just wanted to give an overview of what we do. Uh, PCA. Uh, so, base so that no this is being worked worked out basically see uh, the reason Mahot yes um, we are trying to evaluate uh, what works uh, idea is basically see if you if, if any customer has 100 dimensions right or 100 uh, dimension metrics right when you uh, what are the most or the best set of dimension which impacts him right right so that is where we come. So, we are using trying to use now. Uh, so, the in the multi region setup this data from as Shantanu was saying right from the messaging system we send it to the other uh, cluster. Uh, we do not take it to the uh, store and then copy. So, basically uh, there are two parallel active active setup and each one actually to uh, uh, do their own analysis and based on the disaster or whatever that happened data center goes down we switch. Yes, yes it does there are lots of uh, OAuth and other validations are there. Yes. Uh, yes, I mean uh, there are definitely, there are definitely. Uh, we can talk about detail offline, I think, and there are experts on these areas. Uh, I can connect you with them. But there are uh, issues. I mean, there are. Uh, yes. Any more? Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot.